So I would very much like you to welcome the man that you've seen dancing. He was here at the opening ceremony and he's going to be performing with his group this evening. Please join me in welcoming Ogaba Ochai. I would next like to invite an award-winning poet, a fantastic woman, Daisy Ode. We can do better than that round of applause, please. Thank you. Where is she? Daisy? Okay, we'll wait. And the last person who will be joining us on this panel is that fantastic writer, uh, T.J. Benson. Please welcome him. We're waiting for you, Daisy. Ten minutes we've been sitting here. Eh? Welcome, welcome. Could you check your microphones very quickly? Thank you. Um, I just want to say very, very quickly that the reason that I'm also moderating this panel um, is that I am an individual who is very interested in the arts, especially um in the southwest as you all know um i'm the director of ake festival and i have been very privileged and very fortunate to also be the creative director of kaba fest so i think i'm pretty qualified to moderate this discussion um also to let you know that <laughs> they seem to be happening back to back what normally happens is when we have a problem, we have to sacrifice, uh, we have to kind of rejig the program in a way that causes the least uh, amount of pain to outsiders. So that means those who are members of my team who are chairing programs, we just have to take that hit. And it just so happened that this was the only slot for this one. It's not that I'm trying to use work to kill myself. <laughs> um, Sheon, because it's raining, can we have a bit more volume on the mics? Thank you. So first of all, I want you all to give us some idea. First, you have to tell us what state you are from. And then tell us the kind of cultural um, or arty activities that you've been engaged in in your, in your state or where you live. Let's start with you, TJ. Okay, hello everyone. I am TJ Benson. I am from, I'm from Benue State, Cross River, and Imo. But yeah, okay, but Nigeria is a patriarchal country, so my dad is from Benue State, he's Thief, so I know that's the answer I would prefer. Okay, um, but I'm more familiar with the Thief culture. And in the Thief culture, we have festivals, we have, which are dying off as the years progress. Um, we have masquerade um, performances. We have what they call kwahi, where um, we have um, storytelling in the form of dance. You have the swange. Is there. And uh, just in the university, now state universities, there are theater as departments. But in the villages, in the towns, during um, end of the year, New Year, um, all kinds of um, events, but now they are dying off. So, yeah. Okay. Daisy? Hello, everybody. First, I would apologize for keeping everyone waiting. I was just joking. <laughs> um, I'm from Cross River State. Even though everybody thinks I'm from because I grew up in Joss, I schooled in Joss, I do everything I do in Joss. I write from Joss equally. And in Joss, the um, community, the literary community there is very vibrant. 
but we've had issues of, we've had bouts of communities coming up and dying off and coming up and dying off and coming up and dying off. So we instituted um, Custodians of African Literature, that's COLENG. We've successfully survived four years doing the work that we do. The idea was we were in a space where people wanted to read certain books and couldn't find them. You go to the bookstores and all you can find are textbooks. That's all everybody wants to stock and that's what everybody wants to sell. So we needed to start having those conversations and I think, I strongly believe, I'm a medical lab scientist by the way, so doing this is like, is passion. I do this for myself, that's what I tell my family. So I strongly believe that narratives are driven by literature, by the arts. The community that we have, what people think of the community, irrespective of what is taught in school, it's the arts, it's the media, it's what we build up. So we consciously created this forum. And what we do is we bring in African writers to Joss. And Joss has suffered a lot of negative press. Everybody says, when you say come to Joss, they say, no, I don't want to come and fall into crisis and all of that. But the few who have braved the journey and have made it across to us, they come and they say, OK, this place is really beautiful. And people live here, and this is happening. And they go back, and in that way, we have changed one narrative. And so we hope that when we keep doing that, we change that narrative, and then we change another narrative. And then we also trigger the youths in our communities to start writing honest narratives, not just following pop and trends and talking about crisis and all that. We tell them, we have the everyday just life. We are just. I sit here as a representation of what just is Woo. and what just can be. So that's how we work. Ogaba? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is um, Ochai Ogaba, but she always calls me Ogaba Ochai. I don't know the difference. I prefer Ochai Ogaba. So your first name is, what, which one is your surname? Ogaba. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's good, it's good. Um, I'm a dancer and a photographer. I'm from Benue State by origin. I grew up in Kaduna. I was raised, up, I was raised in Kaduna here. And um, I've been dancing for quite a while now here in Kaduna State. And I barely move out of Kaduna. So like all of my works, aha. Yes, you can continue. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry. Um, so, like, I work from Kaduna, and um, like I said earlier, like, I don't, I barely move out except for a few times that I've traveled out, you know, to work. And um, one of the things that I've actually noticed about the arts in Kaduna and northern Nigeria is the fact that uh, we have, like, real artists in the state. So I'll be using Kaduna State, like, as a case study. We have, like, um, real artists, what I mean by real artists is we have like solid artists who are doing international um, standard works from Kaduna State here that are not recognized and um, this is because we don't know how to own our own, we don't know how to like manage our own artists who are really doing like well in the art industry in, in Nigeria as a whole so like I've had friends who have had to travel to Lagos and not come back and for them, they think this is, this is me being successful. You know, when, uh, when I get to leave the state is when I'm successful in the art form. When I get to leave the country and not come back. So I have a friend working in Egypt. I have a friend uh, working in um, Lagos and other states, maybe in the west or in the east. And they, they feel that this is me being successful as an artist. And I, I see this as a problem because uh, one of the things that we lack is the fact that we don't have... Um, uh, uh, arts managing ins agencies to manage these artists, you know, and um, that was why I, I came up with my dance company called Mod Art to see how I can at least manage the little group of people that I've been um, dancing with for a while. So I used to like have like a dance group 
and then I decided, okay, we can't keep living like this because responsibilities are piling up and these people need to have something. So uh, let's, let's turn this into a company. So when you're coming, you have to meet the company policy. You have to go through all of the processes to get through to us so that you can value our works, so that you can understand that we have, we have responsibilities. We can't keep doing things doing th for free. This is the sole reason why like, people are always leaving the state, you know, to the western part of uh, the country to like work or if they get opportunities to go to even uh, West African countries or uh, other African countries and if they even leave to the US or Europe, that's it. They will make sure they never come back. So like, I think this is like a, uh, a major problem because even recently it just affected me because one of my principal dancer, when my principal dancer, I mean, he just left because he's a hairstylist and he had to leave the company because he thought things were complicated for him and nothing was really coming in, like expectations started coming in from family and this is like the only thing he does for himself. He has other stuff that, he, that he's also involved, involved in. Like nothing is really coming in and you know, we just only started the company even this year. So like it was hard for him to understand that okay, some things could change and I, I really understand with him. And, and I could also see that my friends outside that are also dancers are facing the same challenges. You know, I know friends that are married and then they are dancers and stuff like that. So like, I'm just trying to establish something that, uh, like an umbrella where dancers or artists, or the, yeah, the artists in this particular art form can come under to say, okay, we recognize with this company. So like, if you're coming to me, don't just come to me directly because your family or your friend or because we're all in the same state you know, come under this company and then follow the processes and then know. So like, I, I now enjoy when you, like when you invite me and tell me, I want you to do this performance for me, like how much would it cost? I like that, you know, but uh, it, it wasn't formally like that. People just call you up and then all they always think of is, I'm putting you on a platform. The governor's gonna be, yeah, he's gonna watch you dance. And uh, someone from the American embassy is gonna be there. He's gonna watch you dance. Like this is exposure for you. Like people are going to see you. And trust me, I've like been on all of these platforms. My friends performed for Bill Gates and they are still there. You know, Bill Gates came to Kaduna one time for a project and they performed and nothing happened till, till now. Like they are still there. So like all of these platforms don't mean anything to us anymore. So like you have to go through all of the processes if you want to get to us. Thank you so much. If you can perform for Bill Gates and nothing has come out of it, I mean, I, I can certainly understand the disappointment, but, but I want to take us back a little bit. TJ, you said that a lot of the festivals are dying out. Um, Daisy, you mentioned that um, a lot of the literary communities or literary like institutions would kind of come and go. What would you say is responsible for that? Okay, um, I, I think I forgot to mention that there's the Benue Book and Arts Festival that I think it just had the inaugural um, event this year. And it was really, so when we got there, there was this whole nostalgia for the little festivals we had in our immediate community. It was very cultural. We had um, thief dancers, we had all sorts of things there. So it had this whole nostalgic feel of what we had lost. So I will blame, and I have been trying to look, for, when I knew I was going to be on this panel and I saw the topic, I've been trying to find um, simple language to sort of water down the things I have to say to make it easier to digest. But to be very blunt and honest, um, in my place, at least in um, Benus, I think our priorities have changed. And I can say this of um, the rest of the country. Um, in the past, there was this place for um, literary activities, reading, storytelling, but now, I think the state of the, I don't know, do I blame the economy now? There is a, every, everybody ha wants to live, like what he said. Your success is measured now by if you have left. How quickly, how you, quickly you leave, how quickly you, left, you, you, you get out. Young people, they are striving, whatever they can do, to leave Benue State. So once they leave Benue State, they get to Lagos, they get to Abuja, they leave the country. Yes, that is success. It doesn't matter if they could have attained these things where they were. So some of the talented people, the better developed artists, are no longer there to... Um, and yeah, to mentor this thing or like um, foster um, these activities, right? So we have that, I think that has um, caused a lot of issues. So that priority, our priority have shifted from um, the arts to survival. So 
Okay, so you're talking about the priorities of the creatives and artists. Yeah, the not people. the priority I think, I, of the state. I think the priority of the state shifts because we are all in the system of the state. So um, even though it's not our priority as creatives, but then the priority of the state demands us to perform what it wants, demands us to um, find money to be able to feed. And what kind of, what, what, what will people go to watch in like Benway, for example? The primary source of entertainment in Benway, at least when I say entertainment, I mean broadly now, a lot of it is, say, perhaps religion. That, that's the only ex thing outside work that people will just go and then they beat themselves at. Apart from that, nothing. So, and then some of these cultures also were heavily demonized. Yeah. Some of these, um, um, some of the masquerade uh, dances, even right now in Benway State, uh, particularly the Thief community, they are trying to abolish um, um, tr some parts of the traditional wedding. They, they are trying to abolish the traditional wedding generally because. Um, some churches, some dominant um, churches, uh, missionary um, churches, they believe that it has uh, demonic um, activities attached to it. So some of these dance troops, they don't have, it's only when oh, a new governor comes into office, that is when okay, they unpack them, or maybe they are doing something in Abuja, one conference or something, so they don't unpack them to come to Abuja, and then that's just how many times in a year, right? Then institution-wise, the fear of people like, that, that organizations like um, the Benny Book and Arts Festival, why it hasn't started, why it really started this year, was when you have this kind of festival, there's the fear that, okay, people will not want to come because they have better, in quotes, better things to do with their time, which takes us back to the whole economic um, factor that I mentioned. So yes, the state problem, of course, the creators want to create, but because they are under the states, they have to perform what the state expects of them. Thank you, Daisy. Okay, as, um, as an art promoter, I'll speak as an art promoter, then I'll also speak as from the perspective of a writer. As an art promoter, what I observe is it's difficult to survive without funding. And the arts, the creative sector is not one. Creatives are, we are, we are how would I explain this now? We have, we have the privilege of spontaneity. So if I think of this idea, I initiate it, most times we do not stop and structure. So we have I, I, ideas that just come out and then they are, uh, they are going, 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 and at some point there was no forethought. There was no back structure. There was no, okay, in the next two years, this is where we might be. In the next five years, this is where we are going. And then if we get here, this is how we will expand. There is no full-on strategy. So you just have um, initiatives that just come up and say, oh, it's a good idea to do an open mic. Okay, every Sunday come to our, our let's say here, we'll be doing an open mic. And then for how long will you keep doing that? It gets old. At some point, you have it, it's, okay, it's happening, it's happening. Then after one year, you find that it's, there really is nothing much to look forward to. It's not changing. You now find the, co the community is dwindling. Then the, the, the people who started it often start it out of passion, but do not often think sustainability. But we need to sustain these structures. If, if you love, as much as we love the arts, we need to ensure that those things we love keep thriving. So you find that they say, okay, yes, there is an open mic, there is this happening, but then there is no structure to do this anymore. And that's how those initiatives suddenly go under. Very quickly, who's responsibility is it to to consider um, sustainability we do activism it has to be active and what am I talking about we say journals don't pay writers that's what we complain about but when journals say writers subscribe writers run away and will not sub so how are they supposed to get the money to pay the writers and often what the journals are asking for is not is not really much if we have a community of 1,000 writers and they say, okay, let's pay 500 naira and you get a, let's say, three month subscription and you can read this journal, we have to have this. There's this idea that creativity comes for free and must be given for free and must be taken for free. So, you know, um, it need to be published by Ake Review in, I think, 2017. And I got paid for it, and that was the first place I was published and I was paid, and I felt good. But I also stopped to think, because we ran a literary magazine once, and I thought, okay, where is this money actually coming from? So when you think of things like that, because I didn't have to subscribe, I didn't have to do anything, but I remember that at the previous festival, I saw copies of the Ake Review being sold, and I, I actually picked a copy. So when you go further, you now say, okay, let's talk about something like Saraba. Saraba, for instance. Saraba is on there and it's, it's free. 
And when I actually got published by Saraba, same story, they paid. So when I met Imai Iduma, I asked him, okay, how do you people do it? And he did some plenty explaining and all of that. So I think artists should begin to see that we all have a role to play in this structure. We all can contribute something. If it's not money, we can con contribute effort. We can contribute energy to keep these things we love. That means if I'm running an open mic and I know, okay, I don't want to ticket it, somebody else can offer and say, okay, this, su this Sunday take a break. I would handle, I would lead the session and we would have this. So we, we should actively look for how to sustain the structures that we love to feed the things that feed us, basically. Thank you so much. It, it's, uh, it, it make what you've said um, is true, and I'm, but it, it makes me so sad. It makes me sad because I keep asking myself, is it the responsibility of the artist to also now have to go out and become a fundraiser or, or go out and start beg take your begging bowl everywhere looking for people to contribute and i'm not sure that it is is it yeah, no, no, let's no, see no. what ogaba says and then we'll come back to you okay yeah so that's like one of the major things that we lack here you know um, professional backup we don't have that you know so recently i just did a mod production a full dance production for like an hour plus and me and my team were basically doing everything and i was directing the whole thing and I was choreographing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, directing means that I have to make sure that the lighting is working well. I have to make sure that we, we get sponsorship. I have to make sure that we got someone to help us. Like I had to pursue everything. And you know how bad it is? It was bad that uh, I had to tell my dancers to bring money for costumes. You know? And these are people that I'm supposed to pay I'm not supposed to stress, stress them a bit. We are creatives, you know, but then we always like go out there to do like everything. And do you know why this is happening? Why? Because like we find ourselves in a society that does not understand the value of these art forms. Like you've been talking about mental health. You've been talking about um, the rape and all of these challenges, like uh, all of the crises that we've been having. One of the, if we understand what the art could do in all, in, uh, in all of these challenges that we're having, I think we would, we would then start to invest into it because like I am seen as a street guy. Do you know why? Because all of the guys in the streets, like especially when you come to Verona, like they know me, all of the guys, let me just use the word now. You know them like house art guys. The guys that collect all this ticket money, like the Agbero of Kaduna. And the reason why they know me that much is because they did like a drug abuse uh, seminar and then they brought these guys and then they, then they brought me to perform them. So when I went there, I performed. And when I performed, they all felt free and then they started coming out. And then they met me personally and they started telling me that, oh, I'm a rapper, I'm a dancer. Do you know I used to do this? And then I, I was like, oh, give me some lines. And then they would rap for me. And I haven't had to record one. It's on Facebook. Like, if you hear the guy, they call him 50. He's like the ogre of the guys in Burna, you know? And I realized that, you know, this art form could actually solve most of the drug abuse problems we're having, mental health problems that we're having. Like, I think this art, the art form is actually what caught cuts across like all of the sectors. And I'm not supposed to be the one thinking of how to fuse this thing with you. You are supposed to see the value of what I'm doing. Okay, but then when I come to you, when I even make the extra effort of coming to you, still do not understand how much you need me. And I have to start to convince you over and over again. All of the crises, you guys need like healing. I, I you want you to be clear about who you're referring to when you say you. Like, Everybody, I'm blaming everybody. There's a part where I get to blame the artist. And I'll, I'll get to that part. But this is where like, we need your support. Like, for instance, I do a show and I, 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 I put um, a ticket for 3K, 3,000 Naira. And then one of my friends was supporting me, was helping me to retweet. And then he got a, a retweet from someone that said, 3,000 Naira in Kaduna, is Beyonce coming? <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like is, is 3,000 I want to use to see Beyonce? This is Ochai, so that's why you are paying 3K. You won't pay 3K to see Beyonce. I mean, these are the kind of mindsets that we have, you know? And I made sure that I used that particular event 
to like cut off from so many people that were my friends that have been seeing me like on all platforms and like didn't really care to support me in this context, you know. So I was like, I want you to pay and come and watch me now. It means a lot to me. And if you don't come, that's it, we're done. And right now, I'm not friends with so many people, again. I only like people that, that can support me, you know? Like, if you can't support this thing, you know, then it doesn't make sense. I don't understand it. And I would also take it back to where we, the artists, have issues also, is uh, the fact that we don't, we, we don't have a community, you know? And that community uh, is in the sense that we do not have the same ideology, you not know, like a corporate community where there has to be a leader or something. We don't think alike. We don't think of support me, I support you, like lift me up, I lift you up. You know, when I'm doing stuff, you're not there. So right now, because I'm, I'm thinking in this light, so I decided, okay, I, I have to start going for events and I have to start paying, you know, to go see events. Yeah. So like, I went for some event, I'm like, I've come. If you don't come for my own, that's it, we're done. <laughs> like, so I had to be like that strict. But then that's the problem, like, an artist can't be doing everything. You know, I was telling someone that if this was in Germany or somewhere outside Nigeria, a child of how many years old shouldn't be having a dance company. It is so complex to have, it, like, how can I be having a dance company for God's sake? That's because no one is really doing anything. We don't have this professional backup, you know? We do not have it. So, like, I have to start, uh, like, so, start something. So if you... you what you said just now, for instance, about what's going on outside the country, outside Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So if you were in, did you say Germany? Mm -hmm. What would be happening there? I mean, where are we getting it wrong? You know, these companies, they, they are, there's a lot, of, a lot of money that goes into the art industry abroad. Now, I got to realize also from that- From where? From the government. Good. So I got to realize also that a lot of money actually comes into the art too in this country, but then we don't even know who is who. We don't know who is in charge. I don't know anybody. I don't know who is in charge. I don't know who to go to and hold. Okay, so the government just puts money in somebody's hand and then we don't know who that person is. And they, there's this thing that they do, like whenever they're having something, like they incorporate dance into sports uh, and they put it under, or sometimes they like carry the art, the whole art, as big as the art is. You all know what the art is in this, in this place. And then they carry art. You know, art, let me magnify it first. Art, art, they carry art, like mighty art, and then they put it on that music, so I don't understand. <laughs> you know? So, like, how can you carry art and put under entertainment, and under entertainment, you put it under music? And then they say, just find your own under there. Like, we've given this, been this uh, uh, chairman of music, something, something. I've heard that before. Like, they gave one guy in Kaduna State, like, when the governor came in, he gave him plenty of money, and then he... Uh, He's like the chairman of music or something or entertainment. And then they said, okay, we the, uh, dance, the few dance artists in Kaduna, we went to the um, authorities. Then we're like, okay, well, where's our own now? So we too, we can get to work. Let's put our work. And then you're like, you have to meet this thing because we put you on that music. <laughs> you know? And that didn't make sense to me. Like, you are, I feel the government should go straight. If you're giving it to the art industry, give it to the art and then make sure you specify. This goes to the dance, or this goes to this. It might not really have to actually get to, okay, this is for the dance, but then at least be specific. This is for the art. This is not music, and then art, you find yourself under music or entertainment. So the art is quite big, and then we do not recognize it, and I feel the government should open their eyes and also the society at large to see the importance of this art, because it does a lot, like therapeutically, and every other way, like where we are, some, one thing that actually cut across everything, the economy, like we can generate revenues. Like some, we had like this um, festival that Kudus Onikeku from Lagos did. He organized it, and then um, it was like an international festival. And then people came from France, from Europe, from America, and all that. So one of my friends happened to be at the festival. So he met and related with all of these guys. And then he was like, "Okay, we're doing something. I think we should do something like this in Kaduna State." You know. And then he said, "Okay, fine." They just came for that event, and then he was able to drag them down to Kaduna State. And then when they came here. They were amazed. And then they are already giving us like their assurance that next year they will bring even more people from either Europe or America. You know, because they were so amazed by, amazed by what saw in Kaduna State. You know, like every time I get to perform, you guys are always like, Are you serious? Like you're in Kaduna State? You're like, 
It doesn't just end in Kaduna State. Like, when I go to Lagos, are you serious? Like, you're from Kaduna State? Are you serious? Like, some of the, my friends, dance friends that I have in Lagos now, like, reached out to me through Instagram. Like, how did you learn how to move like this? How can you be in Kaduna and move like this? We do not understand it. And trust me, I am like the one among, like, the lots of dancers, like, that, that are in Kaduna State. I'm sure t you guys are here tonight, and you're, you'll be seeing my company perform. So you get to see what I, what I mean. Like, there are more people like me. Like, a lot more. I'm talking about people even outside my company. Mm. Do you understand? So, like, this can also generate revenue. Like, we have to start attracting people now to come here. Come here. Travel to Kaduna State because it makes sense. But we need your attention. And you that you're from, like, other states, you have to go out and present Kaduna State. We're not like, me, I don't really see Kaduna State as a conservative state like that, like that, too. Because I always put myself out. And, like, I was telling some girl, like, just now, I was like, don't feel constrained. You're in the north. Yeah, there's actually this thing of yeah, you have to be in a sense, you have to constrain yourself so you don't like offend people. But I don't really care like that anymore. And I, I, I'm realizing that the community is growing and then people are not really actually having issues anymore that much. Yeah, so. Thank you very yeah. much. Um, well deserved. The truth is, um, I, I commend you. Um, I mean, I recognize the work you, you do. And I, and I think you're lucky because Kaduna State, that's paying for your performance, clearly also acknowledges and recognizes what you do and believes you should be paid for it. Thank you, Kaduna State. I love you. No, I have to be honest with you. As, as somebody, um, when you come to Kaduna, Kaduna is just... It's one of those places that is, is a constant source of fascination for me. Because, look at it now. You s you're not even from Kaduna. You know? You're from where? Cross River? Benue State. Benue State. But I just love the way you own Kaduna and the way that you've kind of made it your own. And it's the same with you as well. And it's the same with you. You live in Joss. You are, you're representing Joss, but... You know, when I asked where you're from, you referenced, I mean, some other state. And I think that says a lot about this generation. And it means that this Nigeria truly belongs to all of us. And the way this approach you have is amazing. I love it. This is what's going to get you places, trust me. Hey, TJ, is the state, and I mean government, failing artists? Um, yes. <laughs> In okay, what uh, way? Yeah, uh, like in, in, in to even continue add to what he was saying, I think the problem of um, who should be doing all these things. Like, I was going to ask if I was thinking, okay, should I, do I ask this question? Is there anybody in charge of arts and culture in Nigeria? Yeah, but he's busy with Bobriski. Oh, right, okay, right. <laughs> I asked that because. <laughs> right, because. Um, but it's true. Right, right. This right. is what's uh, one of the tragedies of this country is that we have a director of the NCAC, right, who's in charge of art, the arts and culture in this country, yeah. and he is determined to ruin the birthday party of a 28-year-old, and he's uh, gloating about it. So, uh, because I, I had to ask, because I talked to my grandmother a lot. My grandparents, um, they moved here. My mom was a nurse, my grandma was a, gra a nurse, and my grandfather was a teacher. And they had my parents here, yeah. and they tell me, my aunts and uncles, they tell me that in Kaduna here, they had, um, on Saturdays, they would drop them at this um, s s club, Hamdala Club or so, and then there's another, there were clubs where you drop children to read their books, they, are, they, pa they, are, they have um, performances, they watch everything. If I look at the um, history of Nigeria, it seems like there was a lot going on in the north, in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. It's now that we see the north as this arid, place when it comes to art and culture. Yeah. Mysterious, I, I, I was even reading history from the 10th, 17th, 20th um, century, and they are talking about art, the art, our culture. So where, where exactly do we get it wrong? I think um, individually, like you said, I would blame everyone. What is, what, what, what is our value system? What do we consider important to us? That is where the problem is. Somehow between the previous generation and our generation, there was this shift. Because my parents went to watch plays. They went to, um, 
all, all this festival, this art, it seems somehow we became, will I say, more empty as time progressed. And as a student, but because most of my life was um, in the north, I remember going for Ake Festival for the first time, and I saw where it was being held was in the Arts and Cultural Center in, um, in Abeguta, and I was stunned that the building was functioning, like there's an Arts and Cultural Center in Nigeria that is functioning enough to host a festival. The bathrooms were working, the halls were clean, there are no cobwebs, it wasn't shut down, it wasn't incomplete. I was, I was really stunned because the states that I had um, visited, I didn't know if there was any arts and culture, anybody. So, I, yes, the government, uh, it, 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 they don't consider it to be, whoever is in power, whoever is in charge of these things, doesn't seem to, there's a disconnect between the actual artists and this government that is, yeah, the people who are receiving allocations for these things. Then when suddenly one Nigerian has to leave the country and makes it elsewhere, oh, you now see on Twitter, Nigerian, what, 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 what. Even when the person is not even Nigerian, let's say the person has Nigerian parents, but it's of uh, Nigerian origin, we start claiming the person, um, Nigerian, what, what, what. But when the person was in Nigeria, there was not, nothing was being done. We need deliberate systems. That is why I am really proud of um, Kaduna, because um, not just the states, the people, I, 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 I think the best uh, workshop I ever attended in my life was the Yasmin Erufai um, workshop. It was done in 2013. And until then, I, in my family, I, nobody ever took writing seriously. Like, it's, oh, writer, what is that? But I got to this place. We were taking seriously. They say you're a writer. They put a pen and paper in your hand. They asked you to talk about your idea. <laughs> it, I couldn't, it, it, it was crazy, right? It, it, from then, uh, up until, over the years, I have worked with the um, Yasmin Erufai Foundation. I have come for panels. I have um, taught classes with them. It's, it's, it's amazing what they are doing. And we need, I was, we were talking about this in your office some weeks back. And you said it would be nice if more states replicated this. I think, um, I would blame the individual. I think we need to somehow, and there's a cost, right? I can't imagine what doing the things you do has cost you. I, I can't even... Um, Think about it. Three novels. <laughs> <laughs> please, a round of applause to Lola Shunei, please. Right. I, 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 there, there, there's that personal um, cost, but we need to pick up the mantle because we really like these things. We, really, we, we like art. We act in the country like we don't like art, but we actually enjoy it. I don't know why. Right? It, could it be that even the value system. entertainment or recreation has, is being demonized as... Um, ungodly. So it comes to, yeah. Is is that yeah. happening? Yeah, yeah leading us to trouble. Because you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because I remember last year when when the welcome welcome opening ceremony when you came um, to perform, and the MC was a little traumatized by <laughs> when you turned up with mud smeared on your torso, and I think he was like he said, ladies and gentlemen, don't be afraid. <laughs> This is a, uh, it's not a juju ceremony. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> so, it's, so, 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 right, it goes back to what I was saying about um, the demonization of these things in our, like, in my own culture, too. A lot of these things, our, our dances have been demonized. We aspire to Western, yeah, we, we aspire to um, uh, whiteness through um, religion also and um, cultural norms. Like, there's this whole false sense of the African identity. They will say, oh, um, Sorry, say that again. We aspire to whiteness, whiteness through religion. Okay, so we're picking and choosing now. Exactly. Because if we're, if we're going to aspire to whiteness, yeah. culture is a huge part of you know, Western development and how they and how they entertain themselves and what they uh, what how well, they interpret well, well, um, so, recreation. So, so well, the the, the 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 world now, especially like the parents, the everyday Nigerian parents, for them, you as a child, a child is supposed to be wearing a suit and tie now. Okay. He's supposed to have clothes from work, and then he's wear, he goes there every day of the Cuts week. his hair. His hair is on low cut, like so. That's that's what I'm talking. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm talking about. So it goes down back to our value system. What sort of things are important to us? And yes, yeah, and at the end of the day, it's how we see ourselves. In a sense, that's also how we see ourselves. And when we start looking at ourselves through this foreign lens, through, oh, this is what 
things are supposed to be like, or this is what how um, this religion says I should present myself as. Every other thing becomes a waste. But if we can leave these things aside, you we are saying a while back that with art we are able to connect to each other. And I was so, I felt so strongly about it. I look at my friends, aside like the people who I consider close to me, they are of different religion, different ethnicity, other gender, right? But with art, we are we are able to find this middle ground. We are from different countries, but art is the middle ground that we are beginning to we are able to connect and meet ourselves that halfway point. So we need to go back to um, what is important. Uh, let's ask ourselves: Is art important to us? Is it useful for us? Then we begin to act towards that direction. That's what I think. Thank you so much, Daisy. I would like to know if you think the state, the government apparatus, the those who should be supporting the arts, are they failing you? Are they failing us? I don't think anybody in this room would say no to that question because we all have our personal experiences. So, and I think we have um, a lot of, should I say, phantom ministries, sort of. So if you try to do something now and they say, okay, take the letter to the Ministry of Arts and Culture, which is, I am saying this from experience, not from, not from this is something, hap yes. When you get there, by the time they are done telling you the protocols and the processes you are going to go through to get whatever you want to get, which is still a probability because you are not certain that it is going to come out, you will just decide to go home and beg for money and do whatever it is you need to do. But you realize that the, um, culture, the Ministry of Culture, Tourism, they're hugely underfunded in Nigeria, which really? is very strange <laughs> because... Uh, in, in Germany, for instance, um, after the war, 7% mm -hmm. of the budget every year is devoted or was devoted to creativity, the arts, the building of cinemas, of uh, op opera houses, theaters, different things. So, I mean, I remember when I went to the Black Forest in Germany, the tiniest village has like a cultural center. There's a platform where people can gather, where people can talk about the arts and express themselves and, pr and you know, practice whatever art form that they're interested in. And it's, it's curious to me, I'm sorry, Daisy, mm -hmm. because we keep talking about what used to happen. It's actually not that long ago. Exactly, yeah. We had Festac 77. Mm -hmm. How many mm -hmm. years ago is that? Many. <laughs> Okay, so let's put it this way. However old you are here today, your parents enjoyed a tradition of, you know, the, the celebration of arts and culture. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. Your parents did. Your parents' generation did. So it's something happened between that generation and our generation. We don't know what it is, but I feel that you know, as you've been saying, every country has a ministry or an agency whose work is to support the development of arts and culture. I don't understand how you young people are in this situation where you're having to do so much by yourselves. I, I, it is actually, frustrating, I think. But okay, yeah. I think one of the major factors, we've already... A lot has already been said, and TJ made a point. Most artists, most when you strive towards the arts, they think, oh, you're about to become immoral. Yeah. You're about to lose God and all so of that. The so arts are seen as being synonymous with immorality. And indiscipline yes. and all and all a lot of vices. So who where's where's this uh, view coming from? Stereotypes. I think there are a lot of stereotypes when it comes to the entertainment industry. And of course, the portrayal, when, when, you know, when you talk of arts, most people just start running towards music and, yes, full blown. They think of entertainment. Ent entertainment and all of that. So, and when you come, growing up, I didn't know I could be a writer. I didn't know a writer was something you could strive to be. I just felt writing could be a hobby. It's something you can do on the side. But you can't tell somebody, I want to, your, your parents, you want to be a writer. But as you said, there were the same people who enjoyed those privileges then. But that should also now bring us to the point where we look back and say, okay, what happened within that time that changed their perception of what art is? Yep. So the, 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 they'll tell you, the moment you tell somebody, okay, I want to be a writer, I want to be an artist, I want to paint, they just tell you you're going to die broke. 
but that's, that's the only thing. How are you going to survive? How are you going to feed the family? How are you going to do this? And how are you going to do that? Those are the questions that these parents, mm. these are parents, ask us. Because most times, it's not the questions we ask ourselves. It's the questions that these are parents ask us. So perhaps- but Is it a valid question? Let's be is. honest. Yes, because we, over time, as you said, the underfunding, which I wanted to say something about that. Now, I agree that the ministries are underfunded, but even the little we get, how much do we do that's with the little true. we get? Yes, that's it. How much, how do much we of it gets to the artist? Is so to what the is really done? Person. That's the question. That's exactly what I w w where I was going to. So you find that okay. Next thing you just hear is, you s I if we need to account for something, you just hear a rushed festival. They'll just tell you this, yeah. this, this festival, and next thing you're seeing people on the main road, and then you don't really know what is really happening until the whole thing has happened and it's over, and they tell you they've had a carnival or they've had a festival, and it's done by that. So there's ministry. no consultation. So you, the people who are actually living within the state, creating structures where there are none, nobody even consults, nobody asks your opinion, nobody asks you to get involved. Is that exactly. the case? Exactly. That's, that's what happens often. So what we're saying is with the little we get, if that little is able to trickle down, we, we do most of what we do with nothing, being given nothing. We've run Just Poetry Slam, just Poetry Slam is a competition that gives um, spoken word poets a certain amount of money. We've gone as far as giving up to, giving up to a total of 100,000. Running that program alone can cost you up to 400,000 because you're talking venue, logistics, lighting, and all of that. Now, we run that from our pockets, from our pockets, and we do it by ourselves. So if this little, and I believe that that ministry can actually afford to give us that little, Exactly, they can actually afford to give us. So I'm saying, even with the little we get, we understand that there is a, a broader blanket for this problem. There is a bigger context for it. But with the little we get, how much do we even do with it? So most times you find, okay, you find, like he was saying, he's running mod art, and uh, we are running, uh, let's say, coal now. You find us trying to do these things over time, over time, and sometimes you have, okay, a break of luck, you have to take a job, you have to do this, you have to do that to accommodate that dream. That's where the responsibility of the artists themselves. It's not about us going out and um, with our hands out mm -hmm. to say, okay, please um, buy this or do that. Mm -hmm. But when we host events, that's why I like what he was saying. When we host events, we are even scared to put a prize on it. Mm -hmm. Because you are afraid that the same people who will, you will fill a hall with 100 people for free, you will not get 10 people for 1,000 naira. But the, that means 100 people actually enjoy what you do, but they don't see any reason why they should pay you for it. So when you keep putting a price on it, and it's some, some, sometimes it's within our circle, we do it to ourselves. We say, ah, who is your child? Nobody your child we know yesterday. What do you mean by his dancing? I should pay him 3,000. So we do it, we do it to, our, to ourselves. So you now find where, okay, creatives will now decide, let's just do it for free because we need the people. We want these people to come. So that's my challenge to us as individuals. Even as we go out and we see things happening, it's not about um, being as well. You know that, okay, this thing is happening. This thing needs to continue. And we know those who are the grassroots. We see when we're invited for grassroots programs and events, and you know, okay, this is a support, this is this. You, we know that these things have to thrive. Even if it's an open mic and they say, okay, for 500, the artist should be. I don't think there is any artist that does not have 500 naira extra to pay for something like that. But they're telling you, no, create, we are creatives and we don't have the money to do this. But then, we want so we need to build we have to understand that what we have is a value chain not to sound like a capitalist or anything but it's a business this thing is a business it's it's an ecosystem yeah you know, so we have to it's a big and, and and we are all active in the system so and whatever we do not feed naturally it's the law of things it will die it will die. That's just the truth about it. The magazines you see today, as long as you don't feed them at all and they are not getting the grants that they need, they will die. I just want they to will die. I just want like, to repeat the, um, the, part where the part about um, artists nurturing artists or taking care of artists. Okay, okay nurturing the arts by, in quotes, supporting other artists. I think it's like, okay, like saying, okay, like I know you, I have to, uh, I, I pay for events and everything. I think it's not sustainable in the long run. You know, you have heard of the thing about the, um, say, the an, an artist, artist. I find those people are usually poor. <laughs> like they say, I'm the poet's <laughs> poet. Uh, so, so, like, you see, so if I, oh, my more artists, I know, oh, they are so successful, and th but when they talk about this guy, ah, he's a bad guy, but he's poor somewhere. So I think, at the end of the day, I think, at the end of the day, if 
we, we need structures, we need help from outside. And it will take me back to um, the value system in other parts of the world. Because of the way the system, or they have value system, they can just decide that, you know what, I'm going to die, I don't have any relative. Let me just keep these millions of dollars and then invest it and then annually there should be an award in my name. Or you know what, okay, I was embezzling money during my time. Let me just <laughs> do this. But, if, but we don't have any of that. Even the money launderers are not even coming here. The artists. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> yeah, they, they go to entertainment, no, no, they, so they but they don't to, come to the okay, arts. Okay, they stick to music. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just highlighting our value system. I probably, I, I know Jesus, man. But I, I, it's, it's, it's our value system is what we consider important um, in this country. Uh, we, we need, if, the, if, at the end of the day, like you said, you talked about this structure and it's very important. Like the Yasmin Erufai um, um, workshop, I attended it in 2013. I was very young and little and people are telling me that I am a writer. I am already a writer. I should not say aspiring. And being in that place, being we were kept in this hotel, we were, it, it was just buns and coke that we were drinking. But it, it felt like presidential, like I'm here, I'm drinking this buns and coke because I'm a writer. You can't tell me anything. Okay. I, it, uh, so, that, so back to back, over the years, that kind of structure, it gives you this backbone to um, even create from. You cannot be creative. I don't believe in poverty, uh, inspiring the art. It's a very terrible trope. Where, where you say, oh, this person needs to suffer to create. I think it's a very bad situation. But the struggle, so um, we need um, structures from outside, not just within mm. ourselves. Like um, You need support We need su from support, outside support. to help yeah. you build yeah, those structures. Uh, structure. As for saying, okay, I'm going to buy this book because I want to support her. I don't want to get, I always tell, when friends tell me that, oh, TJ, I haven't bought your book, oh, don't feel, oh, no, no, my guy, no, it's not like that. Like, if you feel, when you feel you can afford it, or when you feel you want to buy, yeah, okay, no problem. I don't need your support. I want you to get the book because it's useful to you. I want you to get the book because it's going to change you. And based on word of mouth, my book, that's how my book has been um, selling in the country, not even any serious advertising. So I won't, will I say, although I support what you're doing, though. Like, I mean, I'll kick everybody so, out. No, but let me well, say, no, let, no, let yeah. me say something about what TJ is saying. TJ is talking from the perspective of a, a writer who solidly sits and writes and then it goes out there. I'm talking from the perspective of somebody who pulls events together. Something like this. You need people in this room because what you are creating is valuable for them. You need them to actively engage with what you are doing. That's the idea and that's where I'm coming from. Now you find when you do something like this, if you do it for free, you will fill this hall. That means it's valuable. That means these people actually agree that they need what you are doing. But the moment you say there's going to be a gate fee at that gate, you are going to pay 500 naira or something, this hall will become, we would have only this end of the hall here. And so that's the point I'm trying to make. So, so let's clarify. If, for instance, let's not go as far as Beyonce. Let's say, why, why fee? I mean, what's his name? Um, Okay, let's say, you know, WizKids is a bit too, somebody who is kind of, um, uh, um, this uh, alter boy, Odunsi, yeah? Let's start with somebody like Odunsi. If Odunsi was coming here to perform and people had to pay a gate fee, would they pay? They will. But if they said Ogaba is coming here to perform, they would have a problem with that. Yes, if they say he's coming here to perform with a gate fee. Yeah, with a gate fee. I mean, yes, they'll have a problem with that. And that now brings us back again to what TJ was saying, which is the value, value system, system, number one, which also brings us back to um, popularism. Like, you, you now find where artists start asking the question, how can I sell? What do I need to do to get people in the room? Because the, with the, um, there's the argument that the arts are very elitist. So we, al we alienate a large part of the population. So what he would be doing here, he'll be dancing, perhaps we in this room would get him, but if he goes, let's say, to somewhere like um, the stadium and does that, a lot of people would look at it and be like, okay, what is happening here? So that's, no, but that's the, the fact, including when Especially it comes to if even... if he puts tape, <laughs> cello tape on his chest. So that brings us back. So it's actually, and I think another, th another thing is, there was something, I can't remember on what panel it was said, packaging the message how we package these things. I don't think there's anybody in Nigeria who has watched Big Brother that doesn't know who Titi Lokweshonuga is, who that doesn't know who Efe Paul Azino is, who doesn't know, that doesn't know who um, Wana 
Wana is. So it's the way, the, it's the vehicle that is being used. So we need to meet these people yeah. where they are. We need to find a way to transport, to meet these people where, wherever they are to get our message across. So then I find, okay, ah, what these people are doing is poetry. Is this what poetry is now? Like yeah, yes, yes, you now have a different perspective, but that is how it was packaged and put out there. So I'm sure if we say, if a Paul is coming here, I'm sure this hall would likely, we would have a lot of, a lot of people here who, who would be willing to pay. That brings us back to what TJ is saying, I say the poet's poet or the artist artist. The people we're talking about is the, is the, the grassroots. We're going back there to the grassroots, the grassroots. The people need to come up. Yeah. Somehow, in coming up, you need this community to, 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 to thrive. Not necessarily buying your book because they are trying to support you or they are patronizing you or all of that. No. But it's saying Ochai Ogaba is going to dance at this venue and his people will bring their people. And there are people who bring, it's a numbers game. Right. Yeah. So we always think it's only one person, but one person is 10 people. So if I drag 10 people to this place and you drag 10 people and you drag 10 people and those people come here. The hall will be full. The hall will be full. We get value from it. And those 10 people will have an experience that they go back with and say, okay, wow, you should see something like this. Sometime. And they bring another 10 people. And that's how the community will grow. And that's what we need. No, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, you said something really important about meeting people halfway. Look, no matter how much we romanticize um, those, the, the, the generation before and the things they enjoyed and the stuff that they had access to, the truth is the world has changed. The world has changed. Therefore, indeed, as Daisy has said, even you as a practitioner, as an artist, you have to constantly be thinking of how to sell yourself because the competition is steep. The competition is stiff. It's difficult. And I also want to, as, as somebody who is actually uh, engaging in some sort of entrepreneurship or just you know culture, creating culture, um, it seems like when you're looking for funding, because none of the stuff that we're talking about is possible, this festival wouldn't be possible without funding. Um, and and that's, that's the honest truth. But you've also got to be talking to the right people and engaging the right organizations. And look, if government has failed you, perhaps you need to start turning to the private sector. Private sector and individuals. That's a good... So I feel like if you guilt government, you know, they will at some point do the right thing. But that's what I'm doing with Ake Festival has no government input, none at all. And I really feel that when we have a massive, amazing festival, somehow somebody from government will be like, what's going on there? You know, they pay attention. Lastly, I just want to say very quickly, and then I'm going to throw it open. See, me, Lola Shunei, writer. Hmm? cultural, creator, whatever it is you want to call me. I work in a bank two days a week. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, in wow. fact, we had wow. Book Buzz. I, I started Book Buzz Foundation in 2012. And I realized that I used to quickly go and look for work to pay the salaries of my staff. So once it's the 20th, I start you know, gathering small urine in my bladder about how I'm going to pay them. You know, I had, I think, maybe five members of staff, so I would start making frantic calls, asking people to give me work. They would give me work, and I would use the money to pay my staff. The reason I started Weeder Books was I, re I realized that we needed a commercial venture which would help me pay for the foundation. If anybody tells you that fundraising is easy, it's a lie, right? And I also have to say, I, I said to you that I work in a bank two days a week. I believe that you've, in thinking of yourself first, and even if you yourself value the arts, I feel like in a society like ours, you've really got to be thinking about your belly. And there are a lot of artists and writers who have turned to writing and creativity out of pure 
laziness. They just don't want to work. They don't want to go to an office. Trust me, I don't want to go to an office, but I have to. Because if I don't, then my children may not eat, but that's another topic. Um, so what I want to do now, I want to put, let, take a few questions. Oh, this is so nice. I love this. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, Francis. Okay, can, can we have the mic, please? Can we do one, one minute? Yeah, and we're coming to you. I'll come to you. Okay, so one, Rona, two, uh, Architect El Rufai, three, yes, four, five, and six. Okay, okay, seven, okay? But very quick. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Frances. I really enjoyed the panel. Um, I wanted to talk, uh, I wanted to make a comment uh, about the value system you mentioned. Yeah, what really happens to our value system? Um, I would like to point out religion. There was an influx of religion between the time you're talking about, between the, between the generation of our parents and ours. And then we started demonizing so many things, dances and all of that faded out. And then um, people, for example, in the, I'm a Catholic, so in the Catholic church, there's this period, um, we use um, drums and uh, those traditional um, instruments for, for, for making music, which so many Pentecostal churches are poor. They look at it like, what are they doing? That's fetish. You can imagine instruments, African instruments. I don't know. I, those things make me cringe. I think we have fallen apart so much um, from our traditional system that you made us throw away the entertainment. And most of, of our entertainment were all rooted in the traditional circle. So yes, then secondly, the economy. Of course, the economy got worse. And people were not able, people became so stressed up. A, an average Nigerian parent is stressed. And that's why they say we shout on children and all that. It's, I think it's the stress. The society transfers it to you, and then you transfer it on the, to the next person. Our parents from that generation had it a bit easier. I think the economy was better. We don't like have... True. I, I, yeah. So, I, so I, I think... <laughs> I'm I also think thinking <laughs> how helpful the arts would be in relieving that stress. So... We yes. have the answer to the stress, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, true. But then we've lost the value system, the whole, yeah. And then he talked, he mentioned something which is very important, which has also affected um, dance um, groups in my hometown. Children who dance and teenagers who dance, they get to a stage and then they tell you they want to go because they got an admission into the into university. They have to write jam. They have to go and look for work in Lagos. And then they all leave the villages. The villages are empty. Nobody's there. The Nobody empty. does those dances anymore. The parents who do it are dead. Even our parents now live in the cities. We don't even have parents in the villages anymore. So it's, it's a big problem. I think we have to go. We need to go back to the roots. There's a whole, it's not just the economy. It's not just the people funding. What is, well, there's something in the roots that's not really. There's a yeah. lot to unpack. And the truth is, Thank you. I don't think there's a country that's experienced colonialism that hasn't, um, where you won't find self-loathing, yeah. you know, yeah. as a symptom. Because if people tell you that you're rubbish, your culture is nonsense, you are fetish, you are evil, you are going to go to hell. After a while, there's a way in which you start to believe it. And you start to throw away the things that actually make up your identity. That's where we got it wrong. That's, that's it. Thank you. Rona. So I've wanted to talk about this for a long time because as you guys were talking and you said Germany, all my ears just went up. Um, first of all, I think we as artists, we have to take our share of the blame. Um, to say the government is not helping the arts while sitting in a festival funded by a government is to make too sweeping a generalization. So I'm calling you guys out on that. It's not true because we're actually sitting in a room where a state government put out something and is making sure we're safe here. Um, and in that vein, we need to step up and take responsibility. First of all, artists need to think like a business. Lola herself has just told us now that she works twice a week. A business is not just about money. 
Your business is your profession. Kabafest, for instance, ha is a profession. It's professing free spaces for artists to come together. What is your profession? When you talk about Germany and you say um, Germany supports the arts, yes, they do. But how did Germany get to the place where 50%, there's a 50% reduction for self-employed artists in insurance? They didn't just get there. The artists got together and said, when you're self-employed, insurance is a problem. They went that far to articulate their problems. So if we're still arguing and abdicating funding, we've not yet talked about us getting together and coming up with a proposal from here to say these are the things artists need. It's easy to sit down and say, oh, that guy is chasing Bob Risky, that guy in government, and it's true. Like, F him for that, that was horrible. <laughs> However, have we put a dossier, and I'm not even going to put this on um, Sis Lola, she's done enough. Her blood is right on this floor. What have we done to put a dossier on the table of that man and make him busy trying to understand that some of us cannot even pay house rent? What schemes can be done in states? What schemes can be done to help us so that we can, if you've not eaten, you can't create art. You can't. And me, I'm with TJ. I don't practice the art of poverty, I'm sorry. Yes, because my father died a poor artist, and I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. So what I've learned from Germany is that if you are able to articulate your stance as an artist, I mean, every walk of life, a German office will always tell you, what is in it for us? We need to start thinking like that. When you even say Germany gives artists grants, guess what? They will tell you this year the grants should focus on things like migration. Your, your own role now is to even second guess Germany before they start. The Germans of this world, the ones that have the money, the ones that have the ears, the people in positions of power in your country and outside, what should they be thinking about? If Germany is giving grants to foreigners and it's about um, migration, what a dancer should do is turn his art and try to interpret it along these themes. What a writer should do is not give your voice away, but consider that if you are looking for that next step that does not come with just exposure, but it comes with something that you, you have to meet the world halfway. Everything is a business. Please, let's start thinking like a business. So um, just to respond to what you said, like when, uh, I'm sure when I was talking about Germany myself, I was like referring to Europe, not like I know so much about the art in Germany. And then talking about Cardinal State and saying that this, that this is like a government funded uh, festival. I mean, I've been dancing in Kaduna State for like 15 years. And this just started. And this is my second time of being here. And like I was going to commend the government for this because like this is one of the few things that is happening in the North looking at the theme of uh, this panel and and like only, yeah this is like actually, the only thing that yeah, is happening in the only, north in the yeah. entire like northern nigeria and this is not enough because we are plenty exactly. we are many and i was going to say like i wish like cover fest would be something that would be done like quarterly because like this yes now it, like like yeah no, no, i'm just like it doesn't have to be cover first, but then if we had like events like this, like every quarter of the year, you know, and in other northern states, then we'd be doing really well. And talking about like uh, uh, issues that are rising up in Germany, like the migration, and you, um, talking about how to do a, maybe a production that depicts that, that is uh, that is where funding comes in, because I would need a lot to do that, and that is where funding comes in. So how do I even? Like, you have no idea how many ideas I have as to say, in northern Nigeria alone, do you know how many things are happening that I want to talk about with dance? There's crisis, there's rape, there's mental illness, there is thuggery. Like, I, I really want to go deep into the roots. Like, there are so many things to talk about, even Nigeria, in, Niger in northern Nigeria, and even in Kaduna. But then funding is like a major challenge, so yeah. Yes. So I, <clears throat> I was going to talk about business before um, Rona started talking about it. So I'll just talk about value proposition and target market. Now, Ooh. you can write, but your investor wants return on investment. That return on investment doesn't have to be money. I mean, 
it does, you may not be able to give back but money to that person, but you have to give back something. And it could be money as well. Honestly, I think a lot of writers exist in, I write fiction, I'm the high lord of Westeros, all of those sweet <laughs> things. There is business and entrepreneurship, and it is a rat race. I don't know. It's really, really big, and it's tough. You will write proposals. You will pitch. You will tell them what you want to offer them. People pay 10,000 Naira for their CVs to be reviewed, though. Something they can look for and do on Google. Talk more of you that has beautiful art. You need to tell them why it is important to them. I would use DK Chukumeri as an example. People rush to his show. Abuja people come late for shows, but DK's show, they come early, and no matter how much they pay, for some of them, look, you know they are not even interested in art, but they will just come and they will pay money and they will watch it. It's about value proposition. You have to show them something. And then you mentioned that government gives money. No matter how small, I feel also that we need to hold government accountable. There are a lot of organizations that do that. And Kaduna has the FOI, the Freedom of Information Act. You would go to the Ministry of Arts and Culture and demand that they open their budget. You will make people track them and make sure that those funds go to where they are. I volunteered with Connected Development, and they did a lot of work in Kaduna, and Kaduna State Government is very compliant. Are there other states They're very open. This, so many other states are there, but people do not even know that there's a Freedom of Information Act. They don't even know that they can go and hold um, the local government chairman or whoever it is that has been giving money to do it. If they are doing constructions, you will notice there's a signboard. They write the name of the contractor, the contact. It's for you to track them, actually. So I think writers need to become more involved in civil society. Track money that is meant for art. Let them give you your money. It is your money, or else somebody will continue to sit on it. Thank you. I just have this kind of gung-ho. I feel, feels good to be a Nigerian, suddenly, just after hearing that. We need to do something, there's no doubt about it, and I hear you both. We really do need to take ourselves seriously. Yes. Um, hi, my name is Aisha, and um, this has been a very interesting panel for me because Northern culture, arts, and everything is something that I'm very interested in. And I think one problem that we've faced in the North is the lack of archiving and documenting our culture, our artists. Artists rise in a town and they fall in a town. And at the end of the day, they're just limited to that town. Nobody documents it. Meanwhile, in the West, when you go, they're like, oh, this artist was influenced by this person, and it is documented. And in that way, I think not only artists have a role to play, journalists, lawyers, Everybody has a role to play, and they come in when they are art critics, when they are journalists writing about the art in a town, talking about it in the radio. It's definitely going to promote the art. And number two, the biggest way I think government has failed is not just by um, not giving funding. I think it's by our curriculum, for example. The music curriculum in Nigeria, if you've studied music, you learn about... Um, all the classical where, artists. Where, where, where is the music curriculum? Music. Oh yes, I did in music secondary in secondary school. Yes, and we take government the government schools or private. Private, but we take the Muzon. We we take the Muzon exams. We okay. take the Muzon exams, and you learn about Beethoven. You learn the history of European yeah. art, and then there's Ebenezer Obey. But where's Mama Shata? Where's Don Oiro? I wrote an essay in the Republic about Northern music, and so many people, some of the most cultured Nigerians, wrote to me, and they're like, Oh, I didn't know this was happening. So why aren't Northerners ever seen in the arts, in writing, even though it's a small space, the Nigerian art space is quite small, but in music, in art, in writing, there's a sort of, we're just sort of pushed to the side. And that's why I think Harbor Fest is like so important and I respect it for that. But how do you think we can get over that marginalization of- So I have I think, a little idea, say, okay. very quickly, that I think we can do. I want to take you up on what you've just said. At the next Kaba Fest, why don't we try and publish a small booklet where different individuals, so if there's an artist in your village or in your town that you think the world should know about and that you think should be celebrated, why don't you write about that person? It can be 500 words. Say something about the style, where they started. You can do an interview with the person. Let's collect all these pieces together. You all know the email address. 
office at kabafest.org. I will take the responsibility. We'll look for editors. We'll publish a little booklet and give everybody one for free next Kabafest. But then that research is on you. Yeah. yeah? So you guys have to say, I'm interested in doing this. And if we can find small transport money, 10K, 20K, I think our budget, the Kabafest the budget can cover that. The money is yours. I also want to say, make a comment based on what she said. And I was going to say that on the panel, if we had gotten to it. Um, literature, okay, literature started in, um, when we say literature, when it came into Nigeria as a whole, it started in northern Nigeria, in around the 15th century. It wasn't written in Roman, in the Roman alphabet that we have. It was written in Arabic. In, 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 yes, it was called, that was the genre, it was called Ajami. Yes, that was how it was, that's the, it's a genre of, of Arabic, the Ajami. Characters. Yes. Okay. Ah. In Arab. Okay. Okay. So that's what I was trying. To, thank you. That's what I was trying to to get at. So that happened. Then, of course, the Roman character and um, the alphabets came in, and then it, we started writing that way. So the question is, why aren't there are a lot of Hausa novels? A lot. There are dozens. But you find that you can get Gabriel Garcia Marquez, you can read 100 Years of Solitude today, and it wasn't even originally written in English. But you cannot go out when you try to read. So you find that Hausa, the northern um, literature is popular only within the north. So, and it's only those who can read in that language that can actually access it and enjoy it and understand it. So where in our community do we now bring in trans why isn't translation and um, in mainstream publishing. Why are in these books? Because we go for... Why there are, are people books? who are doing that. Chris Abani yes. is doing research on that. He has a group of um, professors at his university. They want to come to Nigeria and go to Kano. I know this for a fact. And they want to look at, w see whether they can translate. I think it's 25 of the Soyaya texts. Yeah. Okay. So these, these things are happening. Yeah. So, so for me, so for me, right. Okay, he has his own market here, yeah? and he has his own readers there. But we want to be part of them. The Soyeya market is also different from classical Hausa literature, which is where you have things like um, Magana Jariche and all those things. Soyeya is a genre on its own, and it has a particular market, and there is like the mills and booze of northern Nigeria. So it has a specific market. The danger in allow it in, in it being accessible as it were to everybody is it may lose its essence because it's tailored and targeted at a specific kind of like person. So we should leave them alone. Well, that's not what I'm saying. Is. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the reason why, because she's saying it's only popular within the North. And I'm saying there's a reason for that. And it's so yeah, yeah, literature. It's there's no, it's not just that. What I'm even I never read so yeah, yeah. What, what I'm even trying it to it say. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, the fact is, it's important. It's, there's nothing now. We, have, we don't live in a world anymore where we can say anything is restricted to a particular cohort, to a particular group of people. I would love to read. I, I don't read. I've spent my teenage years reading Mills and Boone one a day. But... <laughs> So it's not something I would pick up now at this yeah. stage. However, I'm interested in Soyaya literature. Yeah. I want to know what the stories are like. Yeah. Just to, I'm sorry, just to add to what um, Aisha sorry, sorry. said. Um, first of all, the archiving is very important because if you check, if you say you want to, if you Google me now, for example, you only see me on, uh, please, you only see um, TJ Benson on Arcade Festival website yeah. or fest if you Google a Nigerian artist, there, is there any database for uh, that is that is let's say for any yeah it's yeah it's, that is the challenge and also our educational system if you look at yeah I'm happy that Chris is and um, translating those books but I want readers I want children I want everybody to have access like if it's not in the curriculum it becomes a challenge like how many of us learned about first stack in school how many of us were taught anything about first stack in school when I when I got came to social media, it's black people from other regions, black people from Trinidad, black people from um, Black America that are now telling me about Festac. 
I now go back and start asking um, elders these questions, and then the elder, uh, adults are too, um, first like it's not serious, so just one this yeah. and that. So our value, our, our value system, what is our value system? Value system. Yeah, it still comes back to value system. Also, um, you are talking about writing, 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 yeah. I, when I teach, I, I've, I've taught two, three uh, writing classes. Um, I've taught one in Joss, I taught one in Kaduna. Each time I'm teaching, I ask my children, I, I see my children, my <laughs> students, <laughs> I ask my students, how many times have they come across their names in a novel that they read or in a Nigerian film? And they tell me, oh, like, okay, Aisha and the rest. But I heard the name Kauna. I've not heard Kauna before, it sounds so nice. There are some really cool names that I've not heard before. I'm like, so why? So that is why you guys are writers now. You guys have to be deliberate. As artists in Nigeria, there's the laziness where the default, when you're creating a character, you just, oh, Arinze or Aisha. And then there are the stereotypes that we also attach to these things because we are lazy. So you say, once you have a Musa character, he's a gate man. Once you have, yeah, so... So that, that is why you are, and I, I hope you're a writer, I hope. Ah, thank goodness. So yes. that, get, that can be your agenda. Okay. Yes, Madam. Okay. Sorry. Um, good evening, everyone. Mine is a quick one. I just want to make a comment about the funding, the, where it comes to government funding. And I really don't think it's fair for us to compare government funding in Nigeria for the arts with government funding in maybe the European countries. You know, we are still called developing country. And in the true sense of the word, we are still developing. Those countries are developed. There's only so much in the pot. And any responsible government would rather put more of the resources into education, health issues, and stuff like that. That is not to say that the arts are not important, but it's a question of priorities. So if we know that and we accept that, because this is a forum where we discuss to find solutions to problems. They are the ideal, there's the ideal and also there's reality. I think this is our reality as a developing country. But then, we have other options open to us. Like, um, I think it was TJ that mentioned about individuals and things like that. Because even in the Western world, you, you have people that are called patrons of the arts. Why don't we concentrate on trying to explore that angle? We can go to the dangotes, we can go to the ote dollars, and other people to be able to support the arts. You can like entice them, some of them would like the publicity. You can put their name to certain things. I think we need to explore that. The government, I'm not holding brief for the government, but really it's true that our governments have enough on their plates. You know our population also doesn't help matters. I always say whatever the government wants to do, the fact that we are overpopulated and the population is also spiraling out of control means that these resources will forever be scarce and limited. So I think we, what we should start doing is try to encourage people to support individuals and companies, banks, to support the arts. So that's just I agree with you. I, I however want to say that although the, we, the, the, we, the West likes to, to call us developing countries, I reject it because a lot of the reasons why we're in the state that we're in is because of the exploitation that has happened and it's a, lot of, a lot of it is their fault. Also, they were once, if we want to look at it, they were once developing a developing country too. But the fact is the arts have always been a priority. And you're right, with the patron of the arts, there was a time when it was the king's court so most of the artists and musicians that we know, the most famous ones from 400 years ago, they were actually living like near the palace. The, 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 the monarchy was feeding them, you know? But we don't have such systems. And I feel that we are at a bit of a disadvantage. Um, but I, I really want to say that, like Ogaba said earlier, the arts can help all those things. There are people who don't want to send children to school. So education is a problem. The arts, maybe a play in a market square, might change all that. 
So the arts are useful in all sectors. I totally agree. So For me, it's just attitude. I think if you just start showing interest in the arts, I think it would help beyond even funding or money. If you just start, even in your, while you are, t you are teaching your children, in your, the curriculum, does it sh show interest in Nigerian artists, our current educational curriculum? Even does it rega past. show regard? Does it show any regard? Because regard. any society does that doesn't regard its artist is doomed. Yeah. Right? So it's just, even from the attitude, even before we even get to funding, I, I think we can do much better. I agree. They, uh, yeah. Jasmine, Hi, quickly. everyone. My name is Jasmine. Um, I want to digress a little. Um, when are we going to talk about how when we're in school, everybody sees art as second class? Like, growing up, we, we didn't have... Like I like I love what Yelf did when they brought out people that won prizes for writing. Yeah. Was so we only had um, cowbell competition and the science people that go and win computers yeah. for the school, yeah. or debates where you discuss um, whether a farmer is better than a doctor. That's what all the art students yeah. used men to are do. Better than women. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> when are we going to yeah. talk about how people say, okay, when you don't get admission to study chemistry or medicine, and even art courses are even lower cut off rates you get like they see art as oh but well, you're going to do art, art yeah. class was like, for art class was for exactly yeah, but like summary. i wanted to do art so well my mother was like are you mad i yeah. I, I ended up doing i was really good at it i found out that i didn't want to do it but i just had to do it like i, I studied engineering but i don't want to be an engineer i want to write when i was coming for cover first two years ago they're like how is it going to help your guys i said sideways i'll put it on my cv like yes <laughs> Like, okay, okay, it will help your. It will help my engineering. That's how they allowed me to come. So, how are we going to support a system when the system doesn't even value the arts? I think, in the I, first I think place? it starts from us. It starts from you now. When you go home, your younger ones. How are you going to? Even though your parents or even though the family. So you personally, every single one of us here, everybody seated here, how we treat the young people now who are coming up, how we take them seriously, is going to shape what our future is going to be. But when we go back home, yes, it's messy, and that's how it has been for a very long time. It's the people who are not intelligent in quotes that are being pushed to uh, arts class. If you are intelligent, go to science class. That's how at least we, our generation, was. Even raised. with the book grants, because we got so many, we had to sit down and say, okay, how are we going to do this? What's the criteria going to be? And what we decided is that a lot of the time it's the science, the kids, are the, the, the students and the sciences who get all the awards and all the prizes. So because we have, um, when you're filling the form, you actually say, what course you're doing. And we thought, you know what, for the first time, we're going to focus and support the humanities. So last, yeah? Where's uh, Alex? Alex has disappeared. We really have to close now. Uh, thank you for being such a fantastic audience. Thank you so much. And I want to say a huge thank you to these beautiful people that I have, uh, whose panel I have had the utmost privilege of moderating. Thank you very much, Ochai Ogaba. Thank you, Daisy Ode. And thank you so much, TJ Benson. Please give them a round of applause. I think there might be a book signing out there. Oh. <laughs> what we're going to do, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to, um, so, when, so when Ochai, he's coming for, coming for his performance. After that performance, we are going to do tithes and offering. Everybody, whether it's five naira or ten naira or fifty, a hundred, two hundred, we are going to donate together collectively to support his work. Whatever you have, if you have nothing, no problem. But this we have to start, this change must start with us.
So let's try that and see what we can raise. We will announce the amount tomorrow morning so that we can clap ourselves on the... Yeah, clap for ourselves. Thank you. What a fantastic day this has been.